Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to another Retro RPG. And the poll this time was our winner of the Losers poll. So over the last five weeks, as well as the winner getting a video made of it, one of the entries who got the lowest number of votes has been discarded from each poll. And I brought those back, so the five losers went up against each other, and the winner out of that, the video you wanted to see of those losers, was Slain, the RPG by Mongoose from 2002. And I can see why you want it, because Slain is fantastic in 2000 AD, and it makes a decent role-playing setting. But we'll see as we go through the book. Now, out of the others, I have to admit, I really wanted to do a video on Terra Cantaterra for Millennium's End, because the Millennium's End source books were amazing for the time, and it's kind of a forgotten game now. I also would have loved to have covered Ramsey Campbell's Goatswood for Call of Cthulhu, because it's a very British look at horror. But users have decided no, so those are now put back on the pile. They might show up at some point in the future, because after all, I do only have a limited collection. So if this goes on for ages and ages, I'll bring them back out and we'll do them at some point. But this week, the poll, we go back to the three which carried on from the week befores. So we've got Dark Heresy back, we've got Rifts World Book 5 tracks and the NGR back, and we've got Unknown Armies back. So those three go up once more to see if you want those, or whether you'd much rather have Mega Traveller by Games Designers Workshop from 1987. Now, I've been waiting to do this for a while because I've got a bunch of Traveller and Mega Traveller and Traveller the New Era stuff sitting by my camera looking at me every time I record one of these. So, it's kind of been waiting since we started the polls for me to put it in. So, fingers crossed, that'll win. But I've also added Sword and Fist for Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition, the source book for Fighters and Monks. Now, that's quite an interesting one, and I wanted to add some fantasy into the poll, because I don't like it being all science fiction games, which I tend to prefer myself. I like to give you the option of different stuff there. So, that's the five options we've got this time. Now, I figure it's probably going to be Dark Heresy that wins, because Warhammer stuff does tend to do very, very well. And I have to admit, I had a few problems making decisions on what the second game was going to be, which I decided being Sword and Fist because everything I looked at seemed to be something I've covered recently. There were other Games Designers Workshop games, there was Shadowrun, there was Star Wars stuff, all of which I've covered fairly recently. But I'll have a look around, I still have loads and loads of different games to cover, so I'll add some more options next week. But anyway, let's have a look at Slain. So this is the Slain role-playing game by Mongoose Publishing in the year 2002. And like many games of that period, this is a D20 game. So basically Dungeon Dragons 3rd Edition. But where I'm not a massive fan of everything having the same rule system, and I was probably one of the larger critics of everything being D20 in that period, this is one that I don't mind so much, because Slain is a fantasy game. And Dungeons & Dragons is supposed to be a systemless fantasy game. So taking these rules and fitting them in is no bad thing. But they've taken the Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition rules and modified them to suit the setting a bit more. So there's bits about reputation, there's earth magic. It's a very slightly different uh, usage of the D20 rules. Now let's have a look at the back cover. Kiss my axe. Immerse yourself in Celtic myth. Based on the legendary 2000 AD comic strip created by Pat Mills and Angela Kincaid, Slain is a brand new D20 role-playing game giving you background on Ternanog, the land of the young in Celtic legend, and full rules for playing the various characters found there. The innovative skill-based magic system lets all characters cast a spell or two if they wish, reflecting the superstitious beliefs of the Celts. Channel earth power through your body, swelling to a monstrous size as you enter a warp spasm. Learn the secrets of the feared Gay Bolga, a barbed and spiked spear which always causes fatal wounds, or hurl the dreaded Tathlum, a concrete ball made from the brains of your dead enemies. Battle shoggy beasts, skull swords and Fomorian sea demons for the honour of your tribe. Enrage your enemies with the power of your poetic insults alone, or throw subtlety aside 
and wield a flint great axe, slaying fifty foes to the left of you and fifty to the right. You will not think it too many. Inside you will find... Characters in turn and Og, a complete guide to creating characters for use in the game. The mighty warriors and heroes of the land of the young, druids both wise and evil, cunning witches and wily thieves. Feats, over 40 feats, or, or over 40 new feats give you the chance to learn salmon leaps, shield growls and other Celtic battle techniques. Combat, full rules for naming weapons, taunts in battle and warped warriors capable of taking on dozens of foes single-handedly. Eyes without life, sundered heads and piles of carcasses. Run mass battles of every size from a tribal cattle raid with just a hundred or so warriors on each side right up to full-scale full Fomorian invasion of the land of the young. Earth power. Earth power is the magic of Slain's world, a subtle yet dangerous power derived from the land itself and frequently powered by human sacrifice. Plus chapters on Turn and Og, goods and weapons, prestige classes, a complete bestiary, Adventuring gods and goddesses and running campaigns in the land of the young. Requires the use of Dungeons & Dragons Player's Handbook, 3rd edition, published by Wizards of the Coast. And that's kind of what it is. Slain is from the 2000 AD comic. And the artwork inside is from the pages of those comics. And it is absolutely lovely. Um, they credit all the interior artwork to Glenn Febri, Simon Bisley, Massimo Billardinelli. Greg Staples, Angie E. Mills, Dermot Power, Mike McMahon, Nick Percival, and many, many more. Um, sorry to skip through those. But there is a beautiful line art here. There is some fantastic colour plates later on. Just absolutely gorgeous stuff. Really, really lovely. It's a beautifully presented book. But let's start flicking through. So we've got the introduction. So, just an introduction to role-playing games and what's in this book. It gives you a detail of a brief history of what Slain's about. Because Slain, as a comic character, is set in Turn and Og, which is a fantasy version of Ireland, basically. It's a Celtic nation. It's very different to your standard fantasy. Um... Details about the D20 system. Welcome to the land of the young. We've got a lovely map there detailing Albion, Cambria, Alba, Lochlan, Midgard. So you can see basically this is England with Cumbria. We've got Ireland here, Alba, which is Scotland, Lyoness, which is France. So we can see. This is based around the real world, but a warped fantasy version of it. Characters in the Land of the Young. So, race and class, detailing them. But it tells you about your tribe. Gearses and weirds, because every character has a gears or a weird. So, a compulsion laid on them. Something they have to do. Inic and Sahed. Celtic system of honour and reputation. The languages. Alignments not really used apart from good and evil. We've got the character races. So we've got standard humans. We've got warp ones. A sub-race of humans descended from ancient matings between powerful beast folk and humans. Ones who can warp their bodies to fight more effectively. Um... Have I skipped over? The dwarves. Yes, the dwarves. And we've got dwarves, which look in Slain to be more goblin-like. They are small, mischievous creatures. Um, more talented towards thievery than anything else. Then we're on to classes. So we've got druids. And noble warriors. Look at the artwork. Just lovely detailed artwork here. We've got thieves, We've got tribal warriors, we've got witches, and it details all of those. Now, every class gets earth magic points, which can be spent in different ways. So we're on to the skills section, starting age and money, honour and reputation, and how to gain it. Um, Gearses, 
and weirds. So, you know, your gear says can be you never refuse hospitality when offered to you. Always honour and obey any druid. Um, never listen to the birds of low swilly when the sun sets. Never drink the waters of bow memory between dawn and darkness. Never eat dog. Um, never refuse a single boon to anyone. Your weirds are fates or destinies rather than just something you have to follow. So, long imprisonment or torture, permanent disfigurement, exile from your tribe or kin, something which will be your fate. Now this being D20, so we're on to the feats section. And these include many from the original game, but there's lots of extras. The warp spasms. Oh, your fighter can take their earth magic and warp their body into a more capable combat form. Kind of like berserking, but even more so. Craft wicker man. Craft druid's egg. Dodge monster. Um, Multi-attack. Just lots of feats to customise the way your character acts and combat mainly. But it can do various things. Goods and weapons. So the weapons in Slain are made of iron rather than steel. So one of the points of them is that if you commit a certain amount of damage, so using a battle axe, if you do 10 plus damage, so with your strength and the dice doing more than 10 damage, if it's affecting something because they've got a vulnerability to the weapon or something like that, then it doesn't count. But if you're doing more than 10 damage, then you stand a good chance of bending the sword or the battle axe. And then you get a minus to use it because it's uh, been bent out of shape. So you've got a strength check DC where you can spend one round to stamp your sword back into shape. Or if it's a dagger or something, you can bend it back with your teeth. The target numbers for bending it back with your teeth are much higher, but it doesn't take quite as long. A lovely, lovely detail that during combat you can break your weapons and repair them mid-combat. Um, weapon descriptions, because these aren't the standard weapons. There's no longbow in here, and the short bow is considered just a hunting weapon. Um, these are far more primitive weapons, because the Celtics are a more barbarian-like. If you're just used to standard fantasy, they're more barbarian-like. Um, special and superior weapons, goods and services, clothing and jewellery. Because, again, with iron being the main thing, armor's not really a massive thing in Slain. So we've got combat, we've got naming of weapons, where you get a bonus when you're using your named weapon. Um, taunts, because you can taunt your enemies. So instead of making an attack roll to hit somebody, you're making a taunt to weaken their skills for later in the combat. Um, we've got damage reduction, warp spasms, detailing how they work. So whether you manage to enter a warp spasm and the effects of it. So if you fail your willpower, then you are controlled by the games master or you master your warp spasm. Um, bonuses and penalties to the above table. Chariots, because chariot combat's a big thing in Slain, rather than just mounted combat. Eyes without life, sundered heads and piles of carcasses. So i uh, got mass combat rules for detailing that. You know, when you're fighting units. Clashing armies. Um, Full-scale battles. Then we're on to the earth power. So how they're regained and lost. Basically, you have a certain amount of earth power based on your class and race. And it can be added to. There's certain locations which sap it. There's various standing stones and things where you can touch them and get earth power back. But generally, you tend to heal about one point per hour. Um, and you spend it on powering magic, powering various abilities like warp spasm. Again, some absolutely gorgeous colour plates. Lovely, lovely artwork. 2000 AD had some absolutely amazing artists and they really used it well in this book. 
And um, so we go through various types of standing stones and weird stones that the Celtic people use to power up their earth magic. Um, we're on to the spells. So they're very different spells. Um, no fireballs and magic missiles in here. Mainly um, consecrate, cloak of blackness, because this is druidic magic and witchcraft rather than wizards. Control weather, create half dead, cure injury. Deluge, divination by entrails, flea infestation, invisible horrors. I'll flick through these. The Shoggy Curths. Spear of Light. Torment of the Slain. And then we're on to A Guide to Slain as well, the geography of it. So Alba, Albion, Cambria and Eriu, the lands of the goddess. So Britain, basically. Southern Turnanog, the lands of the Droon Lords, the Borderlands. Tribal culture and tradition of Turnanog. Crime and punishment. Legal defences, lawyers and debt collectors. Social customs and cultures, so marriage, child rearing and fostering. Really going into the details of how a civilization not like the one we live in, because many fantasy worlds are basically just modern day, but with elves. This is a far more primitive, different look at the world. I won't say it's accurate at all. It's definitely a fantasy game. Adventures in the Land of the Young. So, Sky Chariots, because they've got flying airships. That's going to be seen there. Some lovely Simon Bisley artwork from 1991. Simon Bisley. One of my favourite air comic book artists. What else we got here? Very lovely Irish Celtic styles with the tartans there and um, different status effects basically cold disease uh, fire on to rewards and advancement so how you level up what your leadership is and the number of followers you get so by leadership score of 40th you can have 1185 first level followers Prestige classes, so we've got bards um, with all their extra abilities. A battle smiter. A fool. A red branch warrior. A war witch. The gods and goddesses of Turnanog and their festivals. The bestiary. So what we got here, standard animals. So we've got badgers, bears, boars, cattle, elks, woolly mammoths, raven, snakes, saber-toothed tigers, wolves. And then we're on to more mystical creatures. So animated trees, holly, we're on to dragons. A spectral dragon. A war dragon. War dragons by age. So as the dragons age, like in 3rd edition Dungeons Dragons, they become way more powerful. We've got ghouls and goblins. Half dead. Shadowy devourers. Shoggy beasts. Um, Slough, or Slui, I believe it's pronounced properly. Uh, time Monsters, the Titans, Wood Woes, and they want to campaigns in Ternanog. Magic items, which are far more rare. It mentions there is only one um, artifact which has been uh, mentioned in the comics. Gases, Eric to Death. Types of campaign, and then we've got the timeline of the world. So going from 20,000 years ago, right up to present day. And we've got glossary of the terms, because obviously these aren't familiar terms to most English speakers. Uh, some of these 
I know of because I'm Scottish and this is part of our culture as well as Irish because the two countries are very closely linked. But many of these even I haven't heard of. We've got a pronunciation guide. And we're finishing off with some more lovely colour plates before we get into the designer's notes where he talks about how he's always wanted to do this because he loves slain, but how he's customised the rules. Um, there's some very nice parts in there. Oh, I skipped over the fact that there's character names so you can fit people into the setting more naturally. And we finish off with a lovely little index to help us find things. Although, admittedly, I wanted to look up Earth Power and there's Earth Power feats mentioned in here, but just no section for Earth Power at all. I had to find it just by flicking through the pages. And again, some colour plates at the back before we reach the end. So that is the Slain role-playing game. It's a really nice version of the D20 system. They've added some excellent stuff leading to its own style. I particularly like the weapons damage and the way that all the character classes can use Earth Magic but each in their own way. So um, warriors take the magic of the Earth to warp themselves in combat, whereas druids and witches will be warping the world of around them just by using it as magic. It's a much more mythical world than most Dungeons and Dragons and I really really like what they've done as well as obviously I absolutely adore Slain. But anyway I think I've witted on for quite long enough. Thank you very very much for watching as always. Please like, subscribe and comment below because it does me massive favours with the usual algorithm. But please be kind. But most of all as always you look after yourselves. And I'll catch you later. Bye now.